Hey, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kakadash, Shalom, Lubakarium, Shor Yasharala. Um, you know, I want to give double honors to the head apostles, others of Great Millstone. And um, this is for the house of mourning, the house of faith. You sincere brothers and sisters through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I want to touch on something. I want to do a, a touch up on the rich man and Lazarus. Um, okay. And Lord willing, it's edifying through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> so um, let's go to the spirit. <clears throat> I got a couple of scriptures. I got a few scriptures queued up in the spirit. Um, um, let's go. It's Luke 16. We're going to start there because, um, these are one of the, uh, false doctrines, you know, that's being pushed out through Christianity, you know, with the hell doctrine, where there's a place where your spirit and soul goes to, and you're going to just, you're going to burn there forever which is totally um, not biblical. So we're going to touch on this to the spirit. And Lord willing, is that a fine? This is just going back to the basics. You know, once in a while, the spirit jumps on you, you know, to go back to the basics. And this is for the newcomers coming in <clears throat> or even brothers and sisters that want to brush up, you know, back and um, to refresh your memory. So Luke 16 I want to start at verse 19. We're going to read down 30. And we're going to break it down through the spirit. All right. <clears throat> so, oh, and this is a parable. This is a parable. This is a parable. Um, there was a certain rich man. Right. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fare sumptuously every day. Again, this is a parable. So there's a lot of symbolism in this chapter. This story with the rich man, the beggar and Lazarus. And this rich man would be Esau Edom. Okay. This would be Esau Edom, the elites. The so-called white man, the Rothschilds, the uh, Gettys, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, <clears throat> you know, and there's even more trillionaires, super trillionaires, uh, at least that control the planet Earth. Go back to the book of Genesis uh, 25, the blessing was to rule the planet earth with the sword, but he was given also the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven, which means he was given the resources. He was given all the richness, the minerals, everything. And he was supposed, and he was to gain the world by his sword. Pursuant to Revelation 6, verse 4, it says that this red dragon, this red horse, which is another symbolism of Esau being red. He will rule the planet Earth. He will take peace from the planet Earth with a great sword that was given to him. All right. So this is how this man gained the whole world. This is how he had become uh, 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 presumptuously, I mean, so like sumptuously rich. All right. Now, they said he was clothed in purple. Clothed in purple. Let's, we're going to get a couple of scriptures. All right. <clears throat> to connect the dots. All right. To the spirit of Yah, Bashim, Yah, Shai. Okay, this is Luke 17 and 14. I'm going to start at 9. But the point is down on 14. From the wicked that oppress me from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. 
They have now come past us in our steps. They have set their eyes bound down to the earth, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as there were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Malachi 1 and 4, Esau, Edom is the border of wickedness. This is the point, verse 14. From men which are thy hand, to show you that the Lord ruleth in the kingdoms of men. Daniel 4, 17. And pursuing to um, um, Proverbs 21 and 1, the scriptures say that the Lord, the king's hand is in the is in the hand of the Lord, and as the river turns, he turneth whatsoever he pleaseth. All right, so the Lord controls all things; he's the grand puppet master. Verse fourteen: From men which are thy hand, O Lord Yahweh, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life. And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Okay? And this is Esau. He has filled his belly, he has gained the world. He has his portion in this life, because this world is his. As the scriptures say, Esau is the end of the world. This is his kingdom. He's been living it up for long, but now his time is slowly closing, slowly closing. Let's get Revelation 18. All right, I got a couple of scriptures here queued up to the Spirit. Revelation 18 and 16, okay? And um, as we know, this is talking about when you read up, <clears throat> let's go up to get some context. <clears throat> and we're going to jump back down to verse 16. Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power in earth. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So if you understand, this is a dark saying for America, Babylon the Great. Now we understand the context. Now let's go to, uh, <clears throat> to verse 16. And saying, alas, alas, that great city, America, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones, and pearls. Now we understand. Let's go back to uh, Luke 16. All right. Where it said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair some substitute every day. And this is symbolic of Esau. Purple is a color of royalty. All right. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar. Right named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now this beggar symbolically is e, uh, um, Jake, Israel, you Israelites, you will be the beggar. And we're going to prove that you'll be the beggar through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay? And desiring, verse 21, <clears throat> and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So now, let's go into this, because this is heavy. All right, those crumbs will represent your welfare system, your Section 8, you know, these little uh, uh, stimulus checks that Esau throws out to Jake to make him complacent, you know, to make him bow down to his system. All right? That's what it's talking about, okay? The scripture talks about how he, in Revelation, um, what was it, chapter 11, that he would nourish 
them for a time, all right? And that's what he's been doing. And Jake, you've been a beggar. We we at the bottom, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh gonna get a couple of scriptures to prove that. Let's get Deuteronomy twenty eight. Let's go back to the curses. <clears throat> I had it highlighted. Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and verse forty three. All right. The stranger that is with thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shall come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. See? And that's us. This is why when we go back to Luke 16, we are the beggar. Okay? This is symbolic. All right, we are at the bottom because we have these curses on us, okay? This is what's going on. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, all right? These dogs, <clears throat> these dogs will represent these heathen nations, Esau, all right? What did the Lord say? Matter of fact, there was another scripture I had queued up. Let's get it. Uh, where are we at? Let me make Jeremiah up. Uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 12. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers has forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, and that cruel one will be Esau, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. And this is how we became uh, uh, in a low state. This is why Israel, Jake, you see him all around. Bab, you know, we, we're just in a low state, man, morally, spiritually. You know, the nations uh, uh, clap their hands and hiss at us, look down at us, you know, all because of a disobedience. And what did the Lord do? He rose up a cruel one, Esau. And he, he's that rich man. This is the, the parable of Lazarus. This is that rich man. Okay? As you can understand slowly. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah 1 and 6 real quick. It said the dogs... <clears throat> the dogs come past um, Salaka and lick the sores, man. You know, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6. All right, and let's read. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and, pure truth and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Hey, the Heavenly Father wasn't playing no games with us, man. And, um, you know, that's just to show you that, you know, when disobedience, the Lord put us down and he rose up a cruel one against us, man. All right? We're going to get, um, let's get Zechariah 1 and 15. Then I'm going to come back to a couple of scriptures here. Let's get Zechariah. <clears throat> Bear with me. Zechariah. There we go. Where we at? Chapter 1. And 1 and 15. Okay. Bear with me. All right. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they hurt, and they help for the affliction. These heathens, all right? And you understand that the curses are on us so bad that these heathens, you know, these Elamites, these Arabs, <clears throat> you know, Moab, Chinese, they could actually come you know what I'm saying, and prosper, come into America, establish their businesses, and become rich, become wealthy off of Jake's money, you know, and Jake, 
you know, we got little pops and mom stores and, you know, Jake will be successful for a certain amount of time. But soon what will happen? They just can't continue because it's those curses. Scriptures say those curses will pursue thee forever, you know, and that's that's crazy, man. You know, that is crazy. Now, now it says the law, the dogs um, licked his wounds, man, you know. Um, let's go to Psalms 22 and 16, and this is very powerful. Through the spirit of Yah Bashem Yah Shai, Psalms 22, all right. And and Esau, you, you're going to pay for all of this because you 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 further the affliction. Um, you continue to uh, uh, demonize us. You put us through hell. So this this parable of the rich man and Lazarus, it's talking about you going into hell. It's not a literal place where you're gonna burn, and we're gonna we're gonna show you that. <clears throat> Psalms 22 and 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. And this is prophetic. This is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, which was prophesied in the book of Psalms where King David prophesied about our Lord. All right? Okay, and there's other scriptures where the, uh, where the Lord called the Romans dogs. They come past me, you know, around me, you know, because that's how they're looked at from the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The scriptures say the heathens are looked at as, as, as nothing, man. Let's get that real quick. That's Isaiah uh, uh, 40. That's why these dogs, these heathens, they were licking the wounds, the sores of the uh, the beggar, Lazarus. Okay? It's all symbolic. Let's get Isaiah 40 and 12. So how the Lord sees them. Okay? Let's go to, uh, I think, uh, there we go. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he take above the islands as a very little thing. Okay? And that's how the Lord sees these nations, as a drop of a bucket, man, nothing. They, 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 that's it. You know? Let's get verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. See what you're going to understand that the apple of the Lord's eye is his children, the Israelites, which are you so called Hispanics, Latin Americans, man, so called African American, Native Americans here in America, Babylon the Great, and a speckled bird that are scattered around the planet Earth. You are the children of the Lord. These nations, they're nothing in the eyes of the Lord. This is why our Lord Yahweh Shai and King David called them dogs. This is why when we go back, let's go back to Luke 16. It says, um, and it came, and, and, and um, all right, and it says, verse 24, and, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This is why these nations are referred as dogs, heathens, man. All right. And and we ain't even got to go into it, man. You go into some history. These heathens, they they do all they eat crazy, you know, Moab eating cat and fry. Oh, you know, we don't even want to get it. Ham, you, you know how nasty he is. You know what I'm saying? Because they're 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 not the, the children of the Lord. We're the only people that have strict mannerism with discipline. We have a spirit in us that is totally different from Esau and the nations, man. Okay, so let's continue. All right. <clears throat> now, verse 22 goes into uh, it gets a little deeper. Now we're going to break it to the spirit. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments and see if Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay? And um this is all uh this is all parabolic, you know what I'm saying? 
just to show you the, the, the symbolism of it, okay? Let's get Lamentation. This is just going into the hardcore slavery, the hell that Esau is going to go into, man. All right? He's going to go into it. <clears throat> Let's get Lamentation. It's the book of Lamentation. We all know about this scripture. Chapter 4, right? <clears throat> book of Lamentation. Let's start at verse 21. We're going to highlight that. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The, punish, the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. And that's the time we're approaching. We're getting closer and closer to the... Uh, to the end of our captivity, and then the beginning of Esau's captivity. This is why these devils are losing their goddamn mind and losing sleep. This is why he's going to come down with great wrath. This is why he's going to bring out the Karagma. This is why he's going to perform Project Pogo, Project Zypher. You know what I'm saying? Look those up. All right, Jacob's Trouble, World War Three. This is all going to be stirred up and it's going to be uh, fulfilled. Why? Because of the downfall of this man and the rising of Jake, Jacob, Israel. All right. Our rulership is coming. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. All right. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom, to show you that there's a daughter of Edom. This is symbolic. This is America. Uh, uh, Genesis 36 verse 8 says Esau is Edom this is the nation he will discover thy sins man come on all right let's go to um, <clears throat> verse 24 okay and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and as you know Esau Abraham was um, Esau's grandfather so that's why he called him father. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Listen to this. Uh, uh, cool, for I am tormented in this flame. Because Esau is going to go through hardcore labor. You know, this is the, the hell that we went through. Now, guess what? Um, um, um. They're going to go into that, that hell. All right? What the scriptures say. Let's go. To, let's, now let's get it. Um, let see. I got it queued up here somewhere. James 2 and 13. <clears throat> For he shall have judgment without mercy. That shew no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment, man. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High Yahweh to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So in the eyes of the Lord, it's righteous for us to get payback. Like James Brown said, payback, man. Y'all know that song, the payback, man. Okay? It's a righteous thing. And that's what's coming. There's no escape for, uh, for the judgment that's coming for Esau, man. You know what I'm saying? Hardcore slavery, man. All right, let's get Psalms. And your brothers all know about this scripture. Psalms 149. Okay. Let's let's highlight this and go down to uh seven. Uh nine, I think it is. All right, let's read. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now, who are the saints? Precept. This is for you new brothers. <clears throat> Let me get the saints. It's a, um, it's a chapter right before 149, 148, verse 14. Okay, let's, let's highlight that. Uh, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. 
even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord, Yahabashim Yahushai, okay? So the saints are the Israelites. Let's, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the sing aloud upon their beds. You know why they're going to be singing? Because they're going to be happy. They're going to rejoice, all right? They're going to be in the kingdom ruling finally with no sores, no pain, no crying, no death. And they're going to have servants and handmaids, and they're going to rule in righteousness, man. Start with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. The moment you wake up from your bed, you're going to be happy every single day. King David said in the book of Psalms 84, verse 10, that one day in the Lord's kingdom is going to be than a thousand in Esau's world. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the kingdom of heaven and to, uh, uh, to, to live one day here in the, in the tents of wickedness, in other words. All right, verse 6. Let the high praises of the Most High Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So we're going to perform punishment. Scripture talks about how we... How will we meditate terror upon Esau and the heathen, man, for all the wicked and evil they have did to the children of Israel? And we don't want to go into what this man has done to Israel. You're talking about castrating uh, Jake during slavery, butt breaking, raping our woman, you know, uh, ridiculing them, lynching them, hanging them, burning them alive. Look what you did to Emmett Till. Look what you did in 2012 to um, the other, the other, the, the, the young boy. I forgot his name. Um, what's his name? Um, Kendrick Johnson. Look him up. Kendrick Johnson, they rolled him up in a mat. Two Edomites in his school, in the high school, and they found his organs, and he was beat to death. What about the new one that's up here? Look him up, Rashid Carter. All right, they took his spine off in Mississippi. And you know Mississippi is an old racist state, man. So these Edomites are still killing Jake, man. Not to mention these uh, modern soldiers, Roman soldiers, Edomites shooting Jake down. So you're going to have to pay for all of this, man. All right? The Lord said he required the past, man. All right? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And you're gonna be you're gonna go into captivity. You did it to us, so it's gonna come back to you to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Okay, and the elect with with the uh with our Lord Yahweh Shai, King David and the 144, they're gonna be the first fruits to receive these servants as handmaids, as servants, you know, our Lord Yahweh Shai is actually going to have servants taking care of them, all right? When he was King Solomon, uh, uh, he, he had slaves, and he was, he, was, he was on the earth. How much more in the kingdom, all right? <clears throat> so let's get back to the parable, all right? Luke 16, all right? So verse 25, <clears throat> let's keep going. Verse 25 said, but Abraham said, son, remember thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. You see that? Okay. And we just went. You know what we I just explained to you what we had to go through. All right? What we had to go through. All right. So what 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 was uh uh <clears throat> so here goes Abraham's telling him, like you had all the good things, you had all the lavish, you had all the world in your hands, you elites, man, you Rothschilds, all of them, man. Esau had been living it up, man, living it up, trillions of dollars, controlling the planet earth in wickedness. Look at these. Look at these fake uh, uh, royal so-called families, you know, out there in England and Britain, man. You know, the wickedness they've done 
and hidden and hidden shadows and darkness, what they committed, and they ruled with wickedness. They've done evil, man. This man has has corrupted the planet Earth. The people are mourning because of this devil. All right, you he have lived. He has good things. He have lived greatly, man. All right, you had the whole world in your hands, but now the Lord is about to um. Now the Lord is about to take that away from you, man. Okay? The Lord is about to take that away from you, man. All right? The Lord is about to take it away from you, Esau. This is it for you. Okay? So let's go. Uh, verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you, this is Abraham speaking to Esau, being a rich man. And you, there is a great gulf fix. And that is a separation. Okay? There's always going to be a separation between the Gentiles and in the kingdom and Esau. Okay? There's no, there was, there, he, he wasn't given repentance. All right? He is the wicked. He is the evil. All right? You can't get away from it. There's a separation, a huge separation, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that will come from thence. You can't get the kingdom. You can't get the good things that's coming to Israel. You had your kingdom and your, your uh, dainty good things and pledges forevermore on this side. So in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to go to hardcore slavery. You're going to go through hell. And you're not going to be able to pass that breach you're not going to be able to pass that line in the kingdom. All right. What did the scripture say in Revelation 11? Let's get that real quick. Let's get Revelation 11 <clears throat> in the New Testament. Verse 1, I think it is. Yep. It's 1 and 3. Uh, okay. Revelation 11 and 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of the Most High, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Okay? And what is going on now? The house of David is being risen. The tabernacles of David, the third temple spiritually, the men of the Lord. Okay? The first church. Okay? Is being raised up, being built as we speak. But what it says in verse 2, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. See that? It is given unto the Gentiles. They don't have no part of this, of the, of the temple. They don't have no part of the glorious kingdom and the new covenant that was promised to Jake. Okay? Esau wasn't given that. That's that God fix. There's going to be a separation in the kingdom. They're going to be out there in the fields, in hell, in the heat of the sun, working hard, building up, building up the nation, building up the kingdom. They're going to build the walls. Let's get Isaiah 60. Let's get Isaiah 60. All right. And I'm going to start... Uh, I'm going to highlight 10, I think down at 14, 13. This is Isaiah 60, verse 10. <clears throat> and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. The same kings, Psalms 149, that David prophesied about being in chains. Okay, Esau, you damn wicked elites, international bankers. And their kings shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So the Lord brung, uh, the Lord punished us, and he also used Esau. Remember, Psalm 17 says that uh, disappoint him, disappoint the wicked, which is thy sword, right? But in my favor have I mercy on thee. See, the Lord's mercy has always been uh, everlasting. We have never been cast out. You know, we just we just disobey. We went off, and the Lord punished us. And He used the nations. He used Esau to punish us. 
Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. See? So that all the riches, all the fatness of the earth, all the dew of heaven that you had on this lifetime, Esau, that's all going to come back to Israel in the kingdom. And you're going to build our walls. You're going to be out there building the walls, uh, 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 dressing the vineyards, uh, uh, planting. You're going to be the plowman. Okay? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Any one of you nations, any one of you Edomites in the kingdom get out of line, you're going to be punished, man. You're going to be punished. The scripture said, uh, Revelation 2, he shall break them with the rod of iron. All right. And that came from the mouth of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yet yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come on to thee the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, Jerusalem, Zion, Israel, the earth itself, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Scripture said that the, that the, he, the earth is his footstool and the heavens is his throne. So he's going to glorify the earth. Based on Ezekiel 36, he's going to renew and refresh the planted earth. Beautify but mainly Israel. As the scriptures say in Revelation that the streets of Jerusalem should be translucent gold. All right? Beautiful gold. That gold that looks like a mirror. It shines and you can see your reflection. All right? This is what's coming, the reward for the elect. This is the kingdom to come. And this is why Esau is pissed. All right? So let's go back to the parable. We're going to finish it soon. All right? <clears throat> verse 27 all right then he said i pray thee therefore father his his esau crying again you know as the scriptures say he's a cry baby uh hebrews 12 and 16 that thou wouldest send him to my father's house for i have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also Come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Okay? And um that's that's symbolic too, because this goes into how Esau would try anything, any excuse to come to get out of his judgment. And he's not gonna be able to get out of his judgment. His judgment is already ordained prophetically wise by the Lord it has been sanctioned by the heavenly father for this man to go down. Okay. So as, as Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Okay. You know, they, you've been told, but you can't learn righteousness. There's no righteousness in them. Right. There's no righteousness in them. Let's get, um, let me get, uh, let me get, Okay. Let's get Isaiah 26 and 10. <clears throat> All right. They can't learn righteousness. So even if they hear the men of the Lord out in the highways and Bible, you have Edomites that come up. They don't understand. They buckle up. You know, they come against the truth. They, they scream. They threaten. Some do understand. Some don't. I don't know. Well, it's because there's no righteousness in them. You know, they, they, they're not going to repent. There's no repentance in them. They, they've been created to be the e the evil the seed of evil doer they were created in their spirit they, they have a spirit to be the wicked all right Isaiah twenty six and ten and it reads let favor be sure to the wicked yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. And he will not behold the majesty of the Lord. He doesn't care about the Lord. This man was created to be wicked. He's not dealing right with the righteous, which is the Israelites. You could try to teach this man over and over a, 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 a righteousness. He's not going to learn it because he was created to be the wicked. That's it. Okay, let's get uh, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and uh, verse 15. Let's read that. Okay, let's highlight this. <clears throat> that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanted cannot be numbered. All right? This man was created to be the wicked from the beginning. He's that crooked serpent. All right? He, can't make, he cannot be forced or made straight. That's just part of his spirit. What did Habakkuk say? Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. All right, the scriptures. Uh, it's Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. See, their spirit, his soul was designed to be a demon, man, on the planet Earth. This is why the Earth is in turmoil. All right. This is why Abraham said, look, man, you ain't got no excuse. You got Moses and the prophets. You know what I'm saying? And he's trying to get out of his punishment. This is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get out of his punishment out of captivity because he knows. See, the elites know. They're going to go into captivity. They know this is a parable. They know this is why they threw, threw in there the hell doctrine through Christianity to scare people and put fear in people. Or you're going to burn forever. No. This is parabolic, man. Okay? So let's read. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Verse 30. And he said, nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses, because you're not going to learn righteousness. As much as you tell Esau, he's not going to hearken. As much as you tell these Edomites, Vocab Malone, Mr. James Wright, these elites, look, you know, we're the Israelites. You're the devil. This wicked king is being run by you people. What you're doing, all those abominations in Babylon the Great changing people uh so much wickedness going on the things that you have done they're still not going to repent it's not in their dna it's not in their spirit and he said unto him if they hear not moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead <laughs> okay come on man you know what i'm saying let's go let me get two more scriptures and i'm gonna finish it <clears throat> this is Job. Let's go to the book of Job. You know, that was a heavy statement that um that uh Abraham just made there. I gotta read that again. Verse 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, you see the men of the Lord, you see our elders, great millstone, you see brothers out there, sincere brothers in the streets, constantly telling Esau off, rebuking them, confounding them. You know what I'm saying? Right? But they're not going to hearken. Neither would they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, man. Whew. Man, man, man. Let's get Job 21 and 14. Okay? Therefore, they say unto the Most High, Yahweh, depart from us. Matter of fact, Salaka, brothers. Let's start at verse 13. Okay? They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. That goes back to the parable. Let's go back to it in the beginning. I know I'm going back I'm backtracking. This is why I said verse 19. There was a certain rich man, Esau, you elite, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day, man. All right. What did it say is here in Job 21, 13? They spend their days in wealth, but in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto the Most High, Yah, this is how they do. This is what they do. They blaspheme. They speak against the Most High. Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. See that? They don't want to be righteous. They're crooked. They're wicked from, 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 from by nature, their spirit. They don't want the knowledge of the Most High. Let, let's read that again. Verse 14. Therefore, they say unto the Most High, Yahweh, depart from us. Why they say that? For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways, man. They're wicked. This is why Moses told them. 
Uh, uh, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, man. You can't escape. Come on. Whew, man. It's going, I'm going to end it with this one. Psalms 50. All right. And I'm um, going to start at verse 16. And we're going to highlight that to 20. All right. But unto the wicked, the Most High Yahweh said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Because it wasn't given to you. Uh, uh, Psalms 147, verse 17 down to 19 said, These statutes and laws were given to Israel. That's it. And he hasn't dealt with any other people or nation. Right? Verse 17, seeing thou hatest instruction, yeah, going back to Cain, going back to the serpent. You know, Cain didn't give the Lord a, a, a proper offering. Why? Because he didn't care. He was wicked. All right? He didn't follow instructions on how to give the proper sacrifice and offering to the Lord. All right? And cast as my words behind thee. See? He didn't care. That's why uh, Job said he he, he said uh, 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 we don't we uh, depart from us your knowledge. We don't want your knowledge. We don't want to learn the righteous way. What is that knowledge? The righteousness. That knowledge that was given to Adam. This is why he became a living soul. The scriptures say the Lord breathed into him his righteous ways. That knowledge. That perfect now. That now that we have in these last days. The men of the Lord, Lord willing, we're part of that number, man. The elect, they're going to receive that knowledge from above. But now Esau, because he hates instruction and casts the words behind thee. Verse 18, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother about Jacob. Was it Esau Jacob's brother? Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. You see that? This is you, E. This is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, man. All right? Not no place where you're going to burn in hell. No, this is a parabolic story of a prophecy that's soon to be fulfilled. Transition of power. Now, verse 19 said that there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. I want to look up that word sum, sumptuously and then we'll finish it right there, brothers. All right? Let's get it real quick. All right. Sumptuous. There we go. All right. Let's see what it says. Ooh, extremely costly, rich, luxurious, or magnificent. Man, that's it. That's how you, you at least live in, man. You've been living far too long. Good. But now your ending is going. You're going to go. You're going to go from uh, you're going to go from being rich and being the top elites and living so 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 tortuously, right? To 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 rags. You're gonna go from riches to rags. And Jacob, we the Israelites, Hispanic, so-called Hispanics, Native Americans, African Americans, and a speckled bird, we're gonna go from rags to riches. That is the transition of powers. That is the manifestation of the sons of God and these prophets being fulfilled. That is where we're heading at, and Esau is mad. All right? So again, Lord willing, I hope that this lesson was edifying to you, brothers and sisters. All right? Um, call all your how about Shim Yahweh Shai. Shalom, shalom to all of you brothers, man. Shalom.